Hi, my name is Teddy Caputo and I work as an assistant curator at the Berman Museum of Art and today I'm going to be giving you an introductory tour of my exhibition Lucky 7 Acquisitions from 2013 through 2020. So this exhibition is comprised of 50 objects from the Berman Museum's permanent collection that were either gifted to or purchased by the museum over the past seven years. This exhibition focuses on that span of time because 2013 marked a significant turning point in the museum's history. So in 2013, the Berman Museum welcomed an evolution in institutional vision, becoming a platform for contemporary art with a focus on contemporary exhibitions and contemporary collecting. Many of the contemporary artworks on display in Lucky 7 were purchased for the museum's collection from the curated exhibitions displayed over the past seven years, broadening our collection with dynamic recent work in photography, painting, printmaking, and sculpture. However, not every artwork in this exhibition would fit under the label of contemporary. Many pieces were also gifted to us by the Philip and Muriel Berman Foundation, as well as other generous donors. Lucky Seven has brought all of these artworks together for the first time on such a large scale, displayed in our main gallery. This is the first time many of the artworks have been on display since they were either gifted to or purchased by the museum. The Berman Museum's collection is often described as eclectic. As I was working on Lucky 7, one of the things that I was thinking about was this sense of belonging that the work share with one another. As I was thinking about this exhibition, I began to see the artworks in our permanent collection as a family. Uh, they became siblings under their shared institutional parentage. Although many of the artworks on display align with a contemporary collecting vision, many of them also do not fit under that label. As I sorted through hundreds of artworks to make my final selection of 50 and began to organize them on the main gallery walls, there was a real rhythm and flow that started to reveal itself. I placed artworks on the walls in such a way that they began to form a visual dialogue with one another, finding connections in theme, formal elements, color, media. The connections found between the artworks and Lucky 7 affirm that the collecting vision of the museum's past is not in conflict with the collecting vision of the museum's future. So now I'd like to walk around with you and talk about some of the pieces on display as well as some of my decisions for why I chose to put them next to each other on the walls. To start, I'd like to talk about these three photographs from David Leventhal's Wild West series and this print called Untitled Number 123 by Cindy Sherman. So both David Leventhal and Cindy Sherman are contemporary photographers, so they share a similarity in that way, but as you can tell, the subject matter is very different. Despite that, they're using similar techniques to convey a tone of theatricality in their work. As you can see, there's a high contrast between lights and darks in both images, as well as bold color choices. Both of these artworks are using similar formal techniques to achieve what they want to convey. David Leventhal isn't trying to show accurate depictions of the American Southwest by photographing toy cowboys, but rather he is engaging with our nostalgia and romanticization of the mythology of the Wild West. Cindy Sherman made this photograph from her Untitled Film Stills series for a spread in Interview Magazine. However, she wasn't making a traditional fashion photograph, but she's sort of making a mockery of the typical fashion conventions of the time. Both of these pieces also use discomfort to convey an idea, Cindy Sherman using her own body in a very uncomfortable posture and expression, and David Leventhal in content specifically the piece where a man is being lynched. Although they're both photographs, what's similar about them and how they are composed wouldn't necessarily be clear unless we see them together on the wall like you do in Lucky 7. And then I just want to point out these two sculptures. Uh, they are not contemporary pieces of artwork. However, I think they fit neatly in the rhythm of this wall uh, in gesture and subject. I want to talk about this wall because I think it's a good example of sort of three different ways of acquiring artworks for the museum and how they are 
able to form connections all under the vision of the Berman Museum. This print by John James Audubon was probably made in the 19th century and it was gifted to the museum by the Philip and Muriel Berman Foundation. This piece by Lee Bondeku was loaned to the museum in the late 1980s and then was transitioned into a permanent holding after 2013. And then this piece by Dina Wind was a gift of John and Jerry Wind after Dina Wind's solo exhibition at the Berman Museum. Despite the fact that these artworks were made at different times, Dina Wind's piece in the 1990s, Lee Bontaku in the 1960s, and Audubon in the 19th century, they all share a lot of formal similarities. The lights of the gallery create these sweeping shadows on the Dina Wind. These sweeping shadows that share similarities with the curves and edges of Lee Bontaku's print. The Audubon, although representational and not abstract at all, shares a similar compositional rhythm with the Bontaku and the wind. Even the form of the birds mirrors the edges and curves with their round bodies and sharp beaks. Displayed to the right of the three pieces that I just discussed uh, are these three photographs that were donated to our collection by Willie Williams for the Donald E. Camp Collection. I paired these three photographs together because they were given by the same donor. Although they don't share a wall with these three pieces here, the artist who they were given in honor of, Don Camp, is the artist of these three photographs. These three monoprints are a part of the mentor-mentee triptych. The portrait in the middle is of the artist, Don Camp. To his left is his mentor, William Larson, and to his right, his mentee, Jennifer Perry. These pieces were not gifted to the museum by the artists all at once, but rather were collected over the past seven years. Don Camp's photographs are made through a very labor-intensive process where non-photographic paper is coated with casein and earth pigments and then scrubbed away until an image is revealed to the artist's liking. This piece titled Intentionally Left Blank by Hank Willis Thomas is displayed to the right of the three Don Camp monoprints. Although the piece is made with a completely different material and different photographic process, these artworks share similarities through this idea of the reveal. Don Camp's monoprints, the subject is revealed through his labor-intensive artistic process, and Hank Willis Thomas's piece this image is printed onto retroreflective paper, so when you put a flash on it, an entirely different image is revealed. Through different methods, both artworks bring forth the subject matter with clarity. They use this idea of a reveal to create an effective and moving artwork. Out of the 50 works included in Lucky 7, Kara Walker's Resurrection Story Without Patrons is our most recent acquisition purchased by the museum in February of 2020. This artwork serves as an end to the exhibition because it is the most recent piece included, but it also marks a beginning for the Berman Museum. Resurrection Story Without Patrons promises a commitment to diversify our collection with work that strengthens the established voice of the museum. Kara Walker is a leading contemporary artist known for her investigations of race, gender, sexuality, and stereotypes through a cut paper silhouette style typical of the 18th century. In her works, Walker recalls the history of slavery and its violent legacy in America. In Resurrection Story Without Patrons, Walker appropriates the form of a medieval Renaissance altarpiece, a Christian devotional object with a narrative image in the center, usually flanked by two images of the patrons that commissioned the work. This piece is actually a part of a triptych uh, where the two patrons are included on either side, but the museum only has the centerpiece of the triptych. Resurrection Story Without the Patrons is the central panel of Walker's reimagined altarpiece where the bust of a black woman in profile is raised by black men, women, and children as a monument to the Middle Passage. The inclusion of Walker's print in Lucky Seven is especially timely as Americans debate ethics of representation and the removal of monuments, often commemorating white men mythologized in American history. Resurrection Story presents an alternative history in which the suffering and the achievements of black communities from history to the present day are commemorated. So like I said before, this print is an end to the exhibition, but symbolically it's a beginning for the museum. Thank you so much for coming along on this tour with me. Uh, I 
hope you enjoyed learning a bit about Lucky Seven and the artworks that were included in this exhibition. Check out the Berman Museum's website to learn more information about Lucky Seven and the other exhibitions on display at the museum right now. Thank you.